Okay, so we're going to be practicing more of what we did last time where we're creating this normal curve. Um, but we're going to learn something new today, and it's called a z-score. Okay, and that's what this chart that is part of your packet is referring to. Okay, but we'll talk about more of what that is in a second. So for number one, again, I just want us to draw the normal curve again because, again, the percentages never change. So let's just keep practicing. The more you practice drawing it, the better you'll be at drawing it. Even I need more practice. Me too. Okay, so we're drawing our normal bell curve. Kind of looks like a bell. Okay, we have our axes down on the bottom, or axis. Okay, remember right in the middle of this guy is our mean. It's kind of that backwards looking U thing. It's like a little backwards U with a tail. Like, like this? Sure. Okay, and then we have one standard deviation on both sides. Okay, when we're going to the right, you're adding one standard deviation. Remember the standard deviation is that little like O with a tail thing. Okay, then you're subtracting one standard deviation on that side. Within two standard deviations, we draw our next line. So this way you're adding two standard deviations. This way you're subtracting two standard deviations. Okay, and then our last line, three standard deviations plus three and minus three standard deviations. Okay, remember these numbers, based on the information you're given, those will change. Like it'll say your mean is this and your standard deviation is this, okay? But the percentages inside your normal curve, oh, Isaac and Bella notes right here. The percentages inside the normal curve never change. So we can just memorize those and call it good. So the first two, 34%, 34%. Okay, my next section, 13.5%, 13.5%. Okay, then they're getting really small, that's okay. This next section on both sides is 2.35%, 2.35%. And my very last little section, 0.15%, super small percentage, 0 0.15%. Okay, they call this the empirical rule or the 68.95.99.7 rule because within one standard deviation, so going one way on both sides, that's going to be 68% of your data is within one standard deviation. That's where that 68 is coming from. Okay, within two standard deviations of your data, that's where that 95% is coming from. And then within three standard deviations all the way out there, that is 99.7% of all your data. So again, that's where that 68, 95, 99.7 are coming from. But there we go. There's our normal curve. There are the percentages that you can always refer to because they never change. Okay, so now that we have that drawn again, let's draw it one more time. This time just changing the axis on the bottom. Okay, so we are given information this time. We're given some context. It says, the number of hours spent sleeping each day by teens is normally distributed with a mean of nine hours and a standard deviation of 1.8 hours. Okay, this is kind of interesting kind of in your mind, see where you would land on this normal distribution, okay? So it tells us it's normally distributed, so go ahead and draw your normal bell curve. Okay, then you have your axis on the bottom with our numbers that we're gonna add in there. Okay, right in the middle is our mean. What did it say the mean was, the average hours of sleep? Nine. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> I wish I was getting nine hours of sleep. Okay, and then what was our standard deviation? It was going to be 1.8. 1, 1. Yep. Okay, so going to the right, we're adding 1.8. So what is 9 plus 1.8 going to give me? So 1 hour and 40. 
how many? Nine plus one point eight. Ten point eight. Okay, so there's ten point eight hours. Okay, now add one point eight to ten point eight. Ten point eight plus one point eight. Twelve point six. That's okay, that's okay. And then 12.6 plus another 1.8 will give us our last one. 14.4. Oh my gosh, who was getting 14 hours of sleep a day? I wish. That'd be nice. Okay. May, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Like, when was this survey taken? During the school year? I bet not. Alrighty. Okay, so then this way, when we're going to the left, we're subtracting our standard deviation. So what's 9 minus 1.8? 7.2. 7.2. What's 7.2 minus 1.8? 9.5. 9, what was it? 5.4. 5.4. And 5.4 minus 1.8? 3.6. Nice. Okay, you're all working for Braden today. He's the master statistician. Okay, so there's the information, right? Okay, if you want, you can then fill in the percentages, right? We got 34, 34, 13.5, 13.5. I like filling them in just so I can see exactly what percentage goes there. Okay, and that guy, it's 2.35. That guy, it's 0 0.15. And same thing on this side, 2.35. 0 0.15. Booyah. Okay, so again, same normal distribution, same percentages. We're just given some context. Right now we're talking about hours of sleep. Okay, um, now let's answer the questions. So it says, use the information from the normal distribution to answer the questions below. Number three. What percent of students get less than nine hours of sleep? How am I going to figure that out? Somebody tell me. I'm not going to tell you. How would I figure that out? Explain what you're Go doing. This way. Go this way, Braden says, okay? So we want less than nine hours of sleep. So look back up at your nine. Add up all the percentages less than. What is the percentage of people who get less than nine hours of sleep? Or Zero. teens, I guess. 0.15. 50. 50%. 50 oh. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so 50% when I added up all those percentages. Wait, answer me this, you guys. Wasn't nine right in the middle? Yeah. Is it, wouldn't this half be 50% and the other half be 50% if it's right in the middle? Right, if you notice that, booyah, 50%. Okay, so easy peasy. We're still just doing the easy stuff. It'll get harder in a minute, don't you worry. Donovan, question. What did I know to say? 50% uh, so on one side of your mean is 50%, on the other side is 50% because it's split right in the middle, right? Awesome. Okay, number four. What percent of students get between 5.4 and 12.6 <laughs> hours of sleep? Okay, so what am I going to add up? Tell me the percentages I'm adding up. Shout them out as you're adding them up. What am I going to add? I got 90. Okay, so that's what Braden got. If I want it between 5.4 and 12.6, I'm going to add up 13.5. And 34, 34, and 13.5. Look at him go. 34 plus another 13.5. And what was that percentage you got, Braden? 95. 95%. So out of all the teens they surveyed, and again, that would be interesting to know when they surveyed these teens. Was this summer vacation? Because this seems like a lot of hours of sleep. Okay, 95% of them were getting between 5.4 hours and 12.6 hours. Hopefully you're not getting five hours of sleep. Get, get more sleep than that. I got like, four, so. like eight? Eight's good. good. All righty. Okay. Let's look. Now, like I said, we're taking it up a notch. Look at number five says, what percent of students get less than 10 hours of sleep? Answer me this, you guys. We want to know 10, perfect 10. Do you see a perfect 10 on one of your standard deviations? No, we don't. So can we just look at that and add up the percentages? No. No, we don't because 10 is not one of the numbers on my axis. 
So what in the world are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to figure out this percentage? Okay, that's where this really cool chart that I gave you comes into play. Okay, so everybody write down this formula where we have some free space on our paper. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, this chart is what we call a z-score. Okay, and you're like, what the heck is a z-score? A z-score is how far or how many standard deviations, think that, think of it that way, how far away you are from the mean. Okay, so there's a specific formula and equation that we're gonna plug into. Okay, so that's what the z-score is. It's telling you how far from, away from the mean you are, how many standard deviations you are away from the mean. Okay, so here's our equation that we're gonna plug into z equals the score that you're plugging in is your x. So in this case, it's gonna be 10. Subtract the mean, right? That little fancy u is your mean. And then divide that by your standard deviation. It's not a super complicated equation. Score that you're given minus your mean, divide by your standard deviation. Okay, so let's start. So number five, we need to plug, first plug 10 into our formula, okay? So we're gonna get a z-score. Okay, we're plugging in 10 for x, 10. 10 minus? Minus, what's my mean? Nine. Minus nine. That's one. Okay, but then we have to divide it by our standard deviation, which is what? One. 1.8, okay. 1 .8. So go to your calculator here. Okay, we got 10, and this is where I want you to watch how I punch it in, just so that uh, we're being careful with the calculator, okay? So I'm gonna type in 10 minus nine, and then hit enter, just to make sure I'm following PEMDAS. Okay, then I can uh, press divide by 1.8, Okay, and we get this decimal, right? So put that decimal on your paper. We're gonna say 0 0.56, cause we're gonna round it. Okay, now this is what the Z-score is. We want to know the actual percentage of students who get less than 10 hours of sleep. Okay, the Z-score is gonna help us do that, but that is not the percentage. 56% of students do not get less than 10%. That is not the right answer. Okay, so now everybody turn to this chart. Okay? We want to find positive 0.56. Okay, notice you're given two pieces of paper. One of them has positive values. One of them has negative values. We want to look at the positive, right? So first, we want to find 0 0.5. So over here, I'm going to find 0 0.5. Boo, doo, doo. Boom, right there, okay? We watching how I found that, 0 0.5. Then what was it, 0 0.5 what? Six. Boom, boom, six. boom, go over to six in that row, and oh my gosh, this is kind of like, you gotta be careful here. Boom. 71.23. And there's your percentage, okay? So we just found the percent of students who get less than 10 hours of sleep. So it says 0.7123. That right now is a decimal. Okay, so we have 0.7123. I want this as a percentage. So to make it a percentage, we just move the decimal two places over, which means 71.23% of teens get less than 10 hours of sleep. I would say that's pretty fair. Most of you guys get less than 10 hours of sleep. Most definitely. Most definitely. Okay. So we just use the Z score, score chart to find our percentages. Okay, so let's try it again. Number six. What percent of students get more than 11 hours of sleep? Do you think this is going to be a big percentage or a small percentage? It's going to be low. It's going to be a small percentage, right? Okay, so let's find it. What? First of all, do you see 11 on our axis? Nope. nope, so what do we have to use? 
The Z score chart. We got to plug it into our equation. Z equals, what's the score I'm plugging in? What's an 11? Yes. Minus my mean. What was my mean again? Nine. Nine. And then divide by the standard deviation? X to. What was my standard deviation? 1.8. 1. 1. 1.8. 1. All righty. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, let's go ahead and punch this into our calculator, see what we get. Be careful punching it in. I'm going to type in 11 minus 9, then hit enter, and then divide by my standard deviation, 1.8. What would this round to? Two decimal places. 1.11 or 1.12? 1 1.11. 1 1.11. Okay. 1.11. Is that percent? Is that nope. the percentage of students who get? No. Nope, nope, nope. We gotta look at the one, chart. One, 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 okay. Positive or negative side? Positive. Positive. It's positive. 1.11. Okay. So I'm looking at my positive sides. It's going one. First, we gotta find 1.1. One. And go over how many? And then go over to. You see how there's a one right there? So 1.11 1. 1 is going to be right. 8665. Now, wait a second, you guys. Do you think 86% of students get more than 11 hours of sleep? Uh, no. 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 Okay, so here's what the Z score tells us this is the percent of students who get less than 11 hours of sleep. So, how would we figure out more? From 100. So good. Okay, so remember that decimal. We have 0.8665. Let's write that on our paper. 0.8665. Whoops, you want to see what I'm doing? <clears throat> okay, Jameson, what are we going to do with this? Subtract it from 100. Yep. Okay, or think 1, because 100% is just 1. In your calculator, you can do 1 minus that decimal. And then it'll give you the small percentage of those students who get more than that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I have 1 minus 0 0.8665. I got 0 0.1335. All right. Okay, so that's our decimal, 0. Point. There we go. Let's change this to a percentage. Two decimal places over. 13.35% of students get more than 11 hours of sleep. Would you think that's fair? Yeah, that is fair. Yeah, yeah still, still a pretty decent amount of students getting Debate. more than 11 hours. Maybe they're including naps. I don't know. Well, the next one should be easy. Ooh, you think? Let's try it. Okay. What percent of students get between 7 and 10 hours of sleep? Again, do we see 7 and 10? Nope. So what are we going to have to do? Find the z-scores. Okay. So we're actually going to have to do this twice. Sorry. First, we need to find the z-score for 7. Then we need to find the z-score for 10. <coughs> we already have that. That's okay. All righty. Let's find the z-score for 7. Same equation. My z-score equals 7 minus 9 divided by 1.8. 1. 1. Okay. Cool, cool. Let's go ahead and punch this into our calculator, see what we get. I have 7 minus 9. I'm going to hit enter. Negative 2. Divided by 1.8. Ooh. Same 1. Oh, is it the it's same negative. 1? It's a negative. Okay, put that on your paper. Make sure you account that it is negative 1.11. So then which side am I using, positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Okay, find your negative one. Okay, negative chart. I got point one three three five. Let's see if he's right. I'm going to find mm -hmm. negative 1.1 1. 1 first, and then go over to that point 0.1 spot. Point 0.1335 is the percentage, so let's put that on our paper. We got 0. 0.1335, <clears throat> but then it wants between, okay? So what you would have to do is find the z-score for 10, but haven't we already done that? No. <clears throat> did we? Look at number five. What we did? Did we find the z-score for 10? 
Yes. Yeah, we did. Okay. So <laughs> let's go ahead and just write it on our paper so we know what we did. We did 10 minus 9 divided by 1.8 gave us 0 0.56. We found that on the chart to be 0.7123, right? I'm just looking at number 5 right above because that was for 10. Okay, so I'm given these two percentages now. What in the world am I supposed to do with these two percentages to find between them? Minus them. Boom. We're going to take the bigger one minus the smaller one. Okay, so we have 0 0.7123 minus 0 0.1335. I get 0 0.7, 0 0.5788. 0 0.7123. I'll double check your answer. Minus 0.1335. Booyah. Okay, so what percentage of people are between 7 and 10? 57.88% of students get between 7 and 10 hours of sleep. I'd say that's pretty accurate. All right, last problem of the day. This is a challenge problem. <gasps> Love challenge problems. Okay, let's see what it's asking us. Number eight, it says, how many hours of sleep would a teenager have to get to be in the top 20% of hours slept? Are we looking for a percentage here? Like, is that our end goal? We're looking for hours slept. How many hours would a student need to get to be in that top 20% of we need students? To do the Z again. So we're gonna have to do the Z, but we're gonna have to go backwards. Okay? So top 20%. How many percent? Think of it like this. If you're in the top 20%, right? Top 20%. How many people percent-wise are you doing better than? 100 minus 20? 100 okay. minus 20. How many, what percent of people are you getting more sleep than? 80. 80%. Okay, good job. Oh, okay, so. Bad. So we need to find 80% on our chart. Like I said, we're going backwards. Okay, so. Let's look on our charts, you guys. These are percentages. Okay, for example, we found that guy. That's 13%. Do you think 80% is on our negatives anywhere? No. Okay, go to our positives. Let's see, let's see. We found 86%, but we want it to be as close to 80% as possible. So let's keep going. There's 83, 82, ooh, 78, 79, 79, 79, 79. 80, Boom, okay, so that's the closest we can get to 80%, right? What is the Z score for that? Five hours, oh wait, eight hours. 0 0.85. You think that's the number of hours? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 0 0.85. Nope, that is not the number of hours. That is simply the z-score. You're like, dang it, I'm not done. Okay, remember how we got to go backwards? And now we're going to solve for a variable here. 0.85% equals the score I don't know, the number of hours I don't know, minus my mean, which was what? Nine. Nine. Divided by my standard deviation, which was what? 1.8. Okay, you guys, do not overthink this. This is a two-step equation. You're just trying to solve for x. So, do I need to get rid of divide by 1.8 first or minus 9 first? Nine. What do you think? What do you think? Which one's farther from my x? 1.8. Okay, what is the opposite of divide by 1.8? times by 1.8 on both sides. So now in my calculator, I'm gonna do 1.8 times 0 0.85, 1.8 times 0 0.85, 1.53 equals x minus nine. Okay, what's my last step to get x by itself? Add 9 to both sides. Plus 9, plus 9. How many hours of sleep does somebody have to get to be in the top 20%? 1.53 plus 9. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.53. 10.
they got to get 10.53 hours of sleep. 